My name's John Bradshaw and I'm an anthrozoologist, which means that I study the interactions between pets and their people. The book is called In Defence of Dogs and it's about how the new science of dog behaviour, which has been growing up over the last 10-20 years, uh, can be given to dog owners and enable them to be better friends to their pets. It was thought that dogs were wolves in cute coats and that somewhere inside a dog lurked a wild wolf that wanted to take over and dominate the household it was in. And you'll find that in quite a lot of the older books on dog behaviour. And that essentially what dogs want to be is a member of a family and that will be, for a pet dog, a human family. The biggest misconception I think we have about dogs is that they are independent animals that are capable of living on their own. Uh, we know now from research that they're not very good at being left alone. The one thing I think any dog owner can take away from the book is that you shouldn't take for granted that your pet will be able to cope when you leave it alone. What you should do as part of basic training is to train your dog that when you leave you will come home. Dogs do not know that naturally, they need to be taught it. If you teach your dog that, then your dog will be happy to be left alone. If you don't teach your dog that, then there's a good chance that it will be very unhappy when you're out of the house. We need to keep our dogs under control. If you let a dog do exactly what it wants, it's going to end up running out in the street uh, or causing someone some damage. So they need us to be responsible for them. Most of the organisations that train dogs to do complicated things like guide dogs, uh, dogs in the military and so on, use reward-based training because it encourages the dog to be confident, not fearful. And so I think if those organisations can do it, why can't pet owners do that as well? I've had several people who've told me that they've given up punishment-based training because they realise that reward-based training is actually just going to give them a much better relationship with their pet. Dog's emotions are pretty similar to ours in many respects. They'll feel fear, anger, love, affection, joy, the sort of basic emotions that humans feel. And, and science really hasn't been able to distinguish between those in dogs and in people. And the classic one is guilt, where many people, the majority of people apparently, believe that dogs can feel guilt. But the research has shown that in fact they can't. They have no concept of guilt whatsoever. Dogs' senses overlap quite a lot with ours, otherwise obviously they wouldn't be able to inhabit the same world that we do. We wouldn't be able to, to control them and talk to them. But they do have very special senses, and the one that stands out really is the sense of smell, which is vastly superior to ours. We make use of that a great deal these days, sniffer dogs detecting all kinds of things. But uh, we also need to acknowledge that pet dogs are just as good as sniffer dogs are at sniffing, and so we should take that into account when we're interacting with them. And I think if you can uh, greet dogs, for example, just by holding your hand out to them so they can sniff you, that's the polite way to greet a dog in the same way that you'd shake hands with a person. One of the best things about writing a book like this is when dog owners come up and tell me that they've taken something from the book and it's changed the life, it's changed the life of their dog and the way they react to their dog. 